This explainer answers the question, what is an atomic sentence? We're going to talk about predicates and individual constants, and we'll also talk about one way to think about truth when we're thinking about an atomic sentence. First, an atomic or simple sentence is the smallest linguistic entity that has a truth value. What the heck does that mean? Well, let's consider the sentence, Joe sits. You have a grammatical subject and a grammatical predicate. If you simply say, Joe, one might think you're calling out to Joe. If you simply say, sits, one will probably not know what you're talking about because you're asserting a verb without a subject. So by themselves, the word Joe, the word sits, does not constitute a sentence. Together, however, Joe sits does. So to have an atomic sentence, you need a subject and a verb. In Language Proof and Logic, we understand an atomic sentence to be constituted exclusively by a predicate and at least one individual constant. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but let's continue for a moment with the discussion of the first point about an atomic or simple sentence. I mentioned that it's the smallest linguistic entity that has a truth value. In other words, in logic, we deal with sentences that are either true or false. So an atomic or simple sentence has to be a sentence that is either true or false, and typically we're going to think of the simple sentence or the atomic sentence as corresponding to some state of affairs or other. So, for example, if it's true that the Joe in the sentence Joe sits is actually sitting, the sentence is true. False, if it's not the case that Joe sits. One last point about the atomic sentence before moving on. Another way in which we can talk about the atomic or simple sentence is that it is not a compound sentence. In other words, there are no connectives that generate a new sentence. So, for example, the difference between an atomic sentence and a compound sentence would be the atomic sentence, Joe sits, as you already know, and the sentence, it is not the case that Joe sits, or the combination of two atomic sentences to create a compound sentence. Joe sits, but Stewie does not. You'll get to those ideas in a little bit. Let's focus on our atomic sentence though right now. Let's move on. Remember, in LPL we understand an atomic sentence to be constituted exclusively by a predicate and at least one individual constant. A predicate is a property. It is an object's feature. Small, medium, large, left of, right of, and so forth. Cube, tet, dodec, sits, runs, walks, speaks, and so forth. And an individual constant is a named person, place, time, day, and so forth. So we have in Tarski's world, as well as in Boole and Fitch, the names A, B, C, D, E, Socrates, Pat, Joe, or other names, the time of day, the day of the week, and so forth. So we have a property and a name. In terms of notation, we have the following. In language proof and logic, the predicate appears to the left of the individual constant or constants. So we have predicate, an individual constant. Notice that the first letter of the predicate is capitalized. Now notice that, or sorry, now notice that in some cases when words in the predicate phrase are capital, or sorry, are elided, the first letter of the second word is also capitalized. Lastly, the individual constant appears in parentheses and is lowercase. So we have the predicate sits and in parentheses the name Joe. We also know that multiple constants are separated by a comma as you saw in a previous example. So we say A is between B and C. One final note about the notation. 
whatever the subject, the grammatical subject of the sentence is, is going to be the first name in parentheses. I hope this explainer on the basics of an atomic sentence is helpful.